Hey everybody, it's Lou Santiago, and I hope you guys like that so that the pre-beginning to the beginning of the show, Ken did a phenomenal job on it, all the outtakes, it was pretty cool, I enjoyed it. Tonight we're going to have a great show, we've got Ian from Full Custom Garage. Now for you guys who don't know, Ian sports the same kind of dude that I have, but he's got two cool pit bulls that wander around his shop. And there's a tortoise on Instagram. I don't. I gotta ask him about that because I'm not 100% positive. I just know I'd love to have one, one of those desert tortoises. That's just so cool. But the thing I like about Ian and his show is that when he does stuff, if you look at what he's got in his shop, it seems to me like he's working with the bare minimum. He's figuring out how to do it and making it happen. And to me, that is the sign of a true master. Because you got a guy who thinks way out of the box on what he's going to do and how he's going to do it. So therefore, he's got to put some time and effort into it. And I promise you, I promise you, it doesn't always work the first time. So here's the thing. We're going to go out. We're going to put on a commercial. Then John's going to come back. And then we're going to talk to Ian Russell of Full, Full Custom Garage. This way, we can find out more about his skills. We'll see you back in a What you need to do is check out DEI, Design Engineering Incorporated. They keep the heat out so you're not sweating to death. Check them out. <laughs> John! <laughs> Yo, that intro is funny as shit. I laugh every time I've seen it. It's good. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I just wonder how many people are going, what's going on here? I don't understand. Yeah. What's, going, what, what, what's this? What's this? Oh, it's going to get longer, too. As we go on, yeah, it's it going to get long. longer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? But yeah, I'll tell you about Ian. I'm, I'm glad he agreed to do the show. And I can tell you that I think I speak for a lot of guys. When he stands back and looks at his projects, it's always like, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. And you're right. thinking the same thing. He speaks his brain. He explains his brain like nobody else. Yeah. You get inside his head. You and I talked about this. Yeah. The yeah, other guy yeah. that did the same thing was Derek from Vice Grip. Yeah. When you talk, when he's doing his videos, you actually get inside his head. You know what he's saying and what he's talking about. But Ian does the same thing. Anybody that's done something custom and stood back and looked at their work on, did I just mess that up? Or is it right? <laughs> Ian explains that and he, yeah. he picks it apart and it's the same visual that you see watching the show. I think it's great. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's pretty cool. And I'm glad he's on the show because he's a, a unique dude. You dude, know I, he's got a I've cool story. This, I've watched a bunch of the episodes. I, I mean, I've watched all that I, that I've been able to see and I just love his style. And you know what I like is he's, he's doing that whole seven sixties and seventies custom thing you know, Big Daddy Roth and all those guys, you know, bubble top, bubble cars, just all kinds of stuff, man. And that, that to me is cool because man, there ain't a lot of guys doing that. There, no. there There's not a lot of guys doing that. And it, I think it's really cool that he does it. And you're right. It, it, when, when you said that he, he's got uh, low tech, but he's got mad skills and he takes stuff that you and I have, you don't have to have a million dollar shop right. to do what he's doing. And sometimes I tell you, I watch it and go, man, is he going to mess that up? Just like usually he pulls it off and it's right. Proportion yeah. wise, function wise. Yeah. Just go, you know what? Hats off to him. Oh, yeah. And I'm hoping people watch this and, and get an inside look of, you know, what he does and what he thinks. Because I got to tell you, just like for most of these uh, interviews, you know, I do research and look. There's not a whole lot out there on Ian's personal life. It's, it's kept quiet you know, like it should be. And, uh, you know, and he's a pretty, you know, pretty calm guy. Yeah. So yeah. I want to, I want to hear, you know, what he has to say firsthand. Cause I've seen interviews and I, and I gotta tell you, I don't want to pick other people's stuff apart, but I, I think that it's, you know, from the wrong angle, it's all today and not yesterday. And what led up to this point, we're going to try to get into some of that where yeah. to get his yeah. mid skills, you know, his background welding, you know, coming from New York, that type of thing. So it's going to be a cool show. Yeah, it'll be awesome. Right. Yeah. So the uh so I was up in uh I was past your your way the other day. 
I was up in up in Alden, New York. If you needed a place, you should have called me and stopped. I knew you were going, but I was good. I was good. I was good. <laughs> it's just an eleven hour ride. It's not a big deal. Yeah, well, you know. You know, yeah. I could go to sleep and the car knows how to get home. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was yeah. it was a one day show. Next week, next year, they're going to make it a two day show because the actual town of Alden is celebrating their centennial. So they want to do a two day show. So maybe they'll invite me up for that. Maybe I'll do a demonstration because I, I did a, I actually took a 74 or five square body and made it a short bed at the show. Really? Cut it in half and everything. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Why, why didn't you take, how come there's no video and all that to put on social? What'd you do? You blipped out? No, I didn't. It was, it was just, it was just the show. So I didn't really do much. I should have, but I didn't because, you know, I'm pretty irresponsible like that. <laughs> I know I right. should do it, but, this, I'm gonna, but I'm going down to see Ed tomorrow. That's what I was going to say. I'm going down to see Ed tomorrow and I'll make sure that I, I I'll shoot some video. I'll make he sure. Will. If you don't, he will. Yeah. Ed's yeah. a good dude. You know that. Yeah. I'm heading out to Ohio in the morning. Yeah. TV. So I'll be up there until Sunday. I got to call. I got to call. Uh, Goldberg. Damn it. I got to call Bill. I got to call yeah. Goldberg. We got to set that up to get, get that ironed out. Because yeah, I got to do that. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, when I'm on the road tomorrow, I'll do it. Because I'll, I'll be on the road another 11 hours tomorrow. Yeah. I'll, I'll hit you up because I will be on the road too. And uh, I'll remind Ed to tell you. So. Did you, see some, did you see someone just put down a, the only thing missing from the intro was the one legger? <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it in next go around. Yeah. There was a couple of things to go back with Craig Jackson and a few others that I thought were good. But yeah, Ken put that, uh, Ken and Ryan put that together today. It was all last minute because we were talking this morning and Ken's like, I got it. But yeah, we need to start chopping them up and putting them out there. But we're going to blast that out, that intro on the yeah. social yeah. So people can check it out because it is pretty funny. If it doesn't make you laugh, I don't know what's going on. It's not that long. If Ken, just just send me send me the intro and I'll put it on my I'll put it on my YouTube page as a standalone. Why not? <laughs> maybe maybe you can drop some of Ian's stuff in there later because we'll be yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah. I know that. Did you know that Ian doesn't keep any of his builds? He doesn't hang on to stuff. You know, Gene. We we're talking to Gene. Gene still yeah. has some of his. Uh, Gene Winfield still no, has some of his stuff. Any of it? Now, we'll talk about that when it comes That's on. Wild. And did you know that his tortoise is 22? I think it's 22 years old, 75 pounds. Dude, I see it on Instagram. I want, yeah, we got to get into the bottom. We got to get into it. I, I, you know, I know he's in the Mojave somewhere. That's all I can tell you. But, yeah. my, you know, but, you know, Clint Eastwood has a tortoise. Really? They're, the, it's a, they're desert tortoise. That's all I know. That's all I know about him. Yeah, his is from Africa or something. Ian's is from Africa. Yeah, I, I don't I, know how long they live. But that's that's different. You know, that's yeah. unique. Yeah, inside yeah, yeah, yeah. out. What do you do there? How smart is that thing? Yeah, we need. Yeah. We should get a uh, Dan from DD Speed. He's up in Canada. We should get him a tortoise. We'll put a little <laughs> no booties on the tur on the tortoise. They you know? freeze. Yeah. <laughs> they just shut down. They shut yeah. down for the winter. <laughs> Maybe when he's done, with, he can train the turtle. The turtle go eh. <laughs> the tortoise. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm a tortoise, eh? <laughs> All right, well, let's do a commercial and let's get Ian in here. We've been on long enough. All Sounds right. Good. Ken, take us away. <laughs> He's not doing it yet. What's going on? Did we miss something? He was wasn't ready. following the instructions. For more than 25 years, DEI has been controlling heat and sound, all with products developed to protect components and drivers alike, and has become the standard by which all heat and sound control is measured. Each product is developed with solutions to problems in mind. DEI knows when it comes to making and keeping horsepower, heat is the enemy. Innovative technology allows us to develop the highest quality products, quality driven, and that's why the best builders and race teams in the world use DEI. DEI. 
Ian. <laughs> Love the profile. Hey. And I want you to know, I want you to know, Ian, that on, if, on the thumbnail for the show, you do a fantastic La Tigra. I caught that. Oh, what's that? La Tigra. Did you, did you ever see Zoolander, the movie Zoolander? No, missed that one, totally. <laughs> there's, this, there's this movie Zoolander. It's probably 10 years old now. It's with, uh, with, uh, with Stilla, Ben Stilla. Ben Stilla, yeah, the son. Okay. And he's supposed to be a male model. And he only has one look, but it's got several different names. There's Blue Steel, La Tigra, there's Magnum. And, and it's always. <laughs> <laughs> That's about you, seriously, right? I, I don't have much. You had La Tigra so down in that picture. It's phenomenal. I, I mean, you could have been in Stand It. <laughs> He's saying you're a sexy beast and a guy's running away. <laughs> I think it's the haircut. Like I'm heading that way. I'm going to get the haircut. <laughs> hey, it's natural. You oh, know, I mean, how's it going, man? Up. Oh, it's breaking up a little bit, but it's going good. I mean, we're in the afternoon here out in the Mojave Desert, so it's it's got pulling down to about 102. We're still working on it. <laughs> 102. God, man. Yeah. yeah. What made I mean, you move? I just want to know what made you move out to the, to the Mojave Desert. What, I mean, what was... You I had raised out there? San Fernando Valley. No, no, no. I was in Los Angeles for the last 20 years, and I had enough with society. I got out of there. Got you. Got you. Mm. That's crazy, man. Dan, what's, yeah. a, what's, a, what's a story with the tortoise? Fill everybody in so they know what, where it came from, what you're doing. Well, what's the deal? Oh, Thurston is a rescue. He's a rescue tortoise. He, uh... He, uh a school classroom for, for all like the 1980s and 90s and uh he got too big for the class so he was passed around and uh, a friend of ours rescued him and brought him back to good health and we got to inherit him really that's pretty cool yeah, yeah. how long, so he's about, how long ago uh, was that 28 years old oh we've only oh, had him okay. less than a year yeah okay but uh he was uh I could say about about twenty eight years old, and uh, I just always wanted one of those things. They're awesome. What do you feed him, and what's the daily with him? What's what's the schedule like? Oh well, it's super easy because everybody says just consider it a horse, but with a shell. <laughs> so he just yeah. eats hay as much as he wants. Huh. Seriously, but then you can give him treats like. Uh, you know, some certain kind of lettuces. He loves dandelion greens and, you know, strawberry once in a while. But it's basically a vegetarian dinosaur. Wow. Dude, that is so cool. He's super cool. Yeah, he's neat. I mean, yeah, he's with, from those pictures, he's a good-sized tortoise. Oh, he's 80 pounds plus. He's huge, yeah. Wow. I don't know how big he'll get. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Well, and they, don't they get to live like to be a hundred years old? Do they do they live that long? Oh yeah, we're gonna have to plan. We're gonna have to plan what we're gonna do with him when we uh, expire for sure. He's gonna get yeah. passed on. That's how we got him, folks. That were yeah, 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 yeah. Old. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Like Kevin's saying, Super. not too many people have a shop turtle. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't spend a lot of time in the workshop, but uh, he's, he's the run of the house. The yard. <laughs> I can see that he's a footrest and he decides to move. <laughs> that is so. so cool. That's what we call him. That's why he's just always moving. Hey, and it, to me, you're, you're breaking up a little bit. I don't know what the deal is, but what I wanted to start out with to, to set the pace, I wanted to go over some of your your builds. We have a couple pictures to give people a taste of where you're at, what you're doing, and then after that, I wanted to rewind. And start talking about how you got to TV and what you know what it took, you know where you're at, Mav TV, uh, Motor Train, the difference, that type of things. So well, if you don't mind, I'm gonna have Ken put up a couple shots of some of your stuff. Maybe people know. I'm sure they do, but I don't want to assume. And we'll go through and uh, you know talk talk about it and, and explain what happened and what's going. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah, you're breaking up a little bit here, but it seems to be catching up. Yeah. So what's the deal with the, the, the Volkswagen bus? 
So that was a project that my friend uh, Mark Hayward came across somewhere up on the west coast of Canada. That became the Johnny Five, Johnny Jalopy's drawing. It was a shorty bus he found somewhere out there. That one? Oh, I remember that one. Yes. I remember seeing that one. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of yeah, people think yeah, that yeah, I... Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of people think that I massacred a split window bus to build that, but it was actually a bay window that I really radically customized. So it looks like yeah. you had to narrow that down to fit the frame on top of that. What frame is sitting underneath there? It was some kind of homemade gigs, like for, uh, you know, road or whatever, Model A style. Yeah. Yep, I remember that now. That was a lot of yep. work. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a finished, finished, yeah. right? Now explain Johnny Jalopy. Well, I had known about his drawings and stuff, but it was Mark that Hayward, the owner of this vehicle, that introduced me to him. He showed me that, that cartoon. And he's like, "Man, if we could do even something close to feeling like this, I would just love it. I want one, something like this." So I was like, "All right, well, I'll just build you do that." Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty that damn cool. accurate. I mean, when you think about what that takes to put a cartoon car together from that drawing to the finish, that's that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Those episodes, and I, I just yeah, I'm like, what's he doing? How's he going to do this? But you know, when you get the headlights and you start talking, you know, proportion and everything else, so you know what? He knows what he's doing. He walks through it. So, John, you're breaking up bad. Me, well, you're breaking up bad, man. Maybe it is. It sound like it is you. You're freezing up. Done. It's you. It's all you, John. <laughs> so, so Ken kicks him out. It's awesome. <laughs> so, when you did a Johnny Jalopy, right? I saw that you had the roof on there. I, you know, when I remember watching that episode, what what sheet metal equipment do you have? Or are you that guy that goes out on the telephone pole and works it out? What do you? What's well, your what's your plan? Well, I have a sheet metal brake. I have an eight foot brake. Nothing fancy. And then I, of course I got a slip roller and regular hand tools. Nothing. No no special hammers or English wheel on that project. Right. Just real basic. Yeah yeah. See, I'm not a sheet metal guy, man. I you know I'm just I've never had the opportunity to learn it. My idea of sheet metal is from heavy equipment, you know, get eight inch plate and up. So, you know, it's <laughs> for me to, for me to look at that kind of work, it, it really it, it for me it's awe inspiring because I wanna learn how to do that. That kind of stuff. That's what I like. I think it'd be neat. What one thing about that project was uh there wasn't actually a lot of metal forming because if you look at it, I shrunk everything. So I took a lot of material out. You know, the nose skin was the exception because I did build that. But the majority of it, you see, you know, it's a van. And then the roof was simply sectioned out. So it wasn't a lot of forming oh, in that. Okay. okay. So it's just kind of deceiving in that it looks like something that's unobtainable. But it was just a lot of shrinking of the body. Yeah, there. yeah. Because, I mean, it's a small cab when, you know, when you got, when it was all said oh, and done. Yeah. I didn't think, it's I tight. didn't even think that you took stuff out. Yeah, that makes sense now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, awesome. so by getting rid of so much of that, it became like looking sort of like a roadster out of a van. Hmm. So what, what other pictures do we have of, of Ian's work? Because I haven't seen any of them, the pictures at least. Oh, that, yep, that one. I remember that one too, the T-Bird, yeah. Yeah. So I saw that episode and how you did the bubble. Can you yeah. can you explain that to these guys and how that on how you did that? Oh, for sure. You know, you guys had Gene Winfield as a guest on your show. And yeah, uh, right. I was working in a shop where he had his oven. He actually blew a bubble at a Huntington Beach Body Works, my friend Rich Evans here in, here in California. And I saw Gene do that, and I didn't know him too well. And I was like, man, I could do that. <laughs> it was so basic. So <laughs> I just took his hint. I just took his hints, and then we bought some barbecue grills at Costco, just like you said saw on the show and created this box and did the whole thing like super low tech dude that is so cool 
I mean, I mean, obviously you yeah. get your inspiration from guys like Big Daddy Ed Roth. You know what I mean? Who else do you get your inspiration from? Well, all the old school dudes, you know, everybody I've talked with, uh, a couple fellows that have passed especially, but the same sort of thing. It's like, yeah, like we didn't have special tools. Like you guys nowadays in this generation can go and buy a MIG welder for 500 bucks, right? Yeah. And they had to gas weld everything and figure it out. Like no tools. So that's kind of how I was uh, brought into it because I didn't have anything much to start with. How long have you been doing this? Because, I mean, you haven't, you've been oh, doing 50. this for a while. I'm 50, so I've been messing with cars since I'm 12, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same with me. That's why. I, uh, I you did so cool. in 98. Oh, really? Yeah, I grew so up you, in New York, and, uh, you know, I want, to, I want to be out here on the West Coast. We're in New York. Austinang, Westchester County. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just we started out in South Bronx and then went out to Hempstead, out in Long Island. That's where we started at. Yeah. Okay, right yeah. now. Yeah, I thought you, I thought you owed that. County, so I got out of there. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> That's another cool one. <laughs> yeah. That's a cool one. Space Junkie 2.0. That's Ian, me. you know, I know you, you you took apart the original to make this. That took a lot of nerve. What were you thinking when you did that? Oh, it took a lot of boredom, actually. That car, I was trying to sell it for a couple of years. Nobody really? wanted it. It's the weirdest thing, yeah. Because mostly, you know, it didn't have any paperwork. Couldn't really drive it, you know. So it was just like a, a novelty, and there was no takers. So I took it apart. Yeah. Okay, you got the that's the original. There it is. That's yeah. the one you chopped up. Now that to me is badass yeah. too. I yeah. would have a Sorry. hard time cutting a piece of uh, art. Say that again. I started building that car in uh two thousand and four, so it's quite a ways back. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's still badass though. Look at that thing. I mean that's pretty cool. You know what I mean? Ken, do you have the, the do you have the picture of the Merc I had sent over, of Victor's Merc that Ian built, one of the first cars he built for Victor? If you have that, bring it up when you find it. But I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. That, that car was a four-door. You turned it into a two-door. I'm assuming, of course, four-door. It had a, uh, a hard top. You chopped it off. What I wanted to ask you is <clears throat> the grill. What was going on with the grill? How did you do that? It looks like a 52, 53 Ford truck teeth that you used and somehow uh, molded out or did I, I i didn't see how that was built if there was a show on that one but i, I built a couple mercs and that one i was standing there going you know that's different and cool but yet you know how do you do it you know what i mean because i think it was painted silver it wasn't chrome so what was the material can you explain that for me oh for sure that, that car actually has an interesting history because gene winfield is the one who started that car victor bought it from gene he did the two to four door four door to two door conversion oh <clears throat> yeah did he make it a convertible so, uh, or did you, did you do that victor's guy did that so i guess gene got the car and it was a basket case and he was starting to do some work to it and they were gonna find the top for it i guess somebody had hacked the roof off so uh victor bought it from him and he was messing around with that. Again, that car came into my shop in about 2001. And then uh, it's been through all kinds of stuff, you know, subframe, four link, airbags, all the stuff. And uh, the grill was a 53 Ford truck tooth that I, I molded and we cast them in aluminum. And I was actually selling those for a while. Cast oh, aluminum wow. grill teeth in all different shapes. But they're Cadillac, yeah. uh, you know, the direct Mars on the side are caddy with the, uh, the centers being a model of a Ford truck center tooth, yeah. That's like 53 or 54 Cadillac with the, with the yeah. bullets, right? Somewhere around there, right? And, and they're all, the, the front and rear bumper on that are all heavily modified too, yeah. If you look behind it, you can see they're sectioned in about 20 different ways. Yeah. Now, yeah. Victor still has that car? They, oh, yeah, and it's all chrome now. He sent all that stuff off, and they did a beautiful job. All the grill and bumpers are chrome now. Man. Ian, hey, hey, yeah. explain, hey. explain your relationship with Victor so everybody knows, because I think what I'm assuming that people 
follow along with the person's name. They know his his is visually, but they may not remember his name. Tell us about that. Okay, well, Victor. <clears throat> yeah, he's a he's a long term client. Uh, as I mentioned, I moved here from New York. Just you know, nobody, right? I rented a shop kind of near his place, and he walked in one day. You know, it's called Way Custom Metalworks. I put up a big sign. I do welding. You know, he's like, oh, I see you got all these crazy cars. I do cars too. <laughs> I saw some of the stuff he was working on, and we've been friends ever since. That's the thing. It's like he just happened to walk in. You know, he's a successful dude. Cars are his thing, and he's always got something brewing. That's really our relationship. He's just he's a fiend for custom cars. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, that, that really is. Uh, yeah, just a heck of a nice guy in general. I mean, he puts on the show for the TV. You know, he's not this wild and crazy character in all aspects of his life, but he likes to put it on. I like his speech pattern. I mean, he has a unique way of saying things. He, he's slower pattern, but he always says your name, Ian. I was told Ian. I didn't know what I want to do with the taillights. <laughs> he, he sounds just like that with the Riviera. Well, you know, I was, I was thinking it's pretty comical. You guys get along really well, and it's a perfect balance because you always look like you're going, ah, uh, yeah, I think I can pull that off. We'll figure it out. And you do, of course. It's, it's, it's pretty unique. Well, also, a lot of the stirring of the pot is our producer, Brooks. We're all friends in about the same time period, right? So he's like, yeah, Victor, so tell Ian you want to do something like totally different than what he just designed, right? That's why Victor's like, Ian, I'm telling you, we got to do it this way. So yeah, that's it. He's, he's putting it on just to, you know, just to give it to me on the, you know, the presentation of the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Porsche, the Porsche episode, I think, was one of my favorites because I, I, you know, I'm standing there going, I've always thought to do something that crazy, but to take that on and make it work, I mean, it, it was totally over the top, and, and to be so calm about it, going, I got this. It's just, you know, it's was, it was pretty cool. But uh, I was sweating that one for sure, mostly because of the electronics, right? That thing had sensors on everything. Thing. Like you couldn't drive that if your seatbelt wasn't on and you were in the seat type of thing, you know. Right. So we yeah. struggled with a lot of that electrical stuff, and that true story. Victor found this from one of his buddies, you know, and he was just like, he bought that car and then showed it to me, like, no, this is what we're cutting apart, like for sure. Yeah, right, right. Let Let's go back. You know, you talked a little bit about uh, Messman cars are 12 years old. And I saw somewhere that your first car was, I think your dad gave you your grandmother's VW that was rusted out. Now, mm -hmm. what was all that about? The tech part of how old were you? Because I'm trying to figure out where you got your mad skills and vision from. That just doesn't fall out of the sky. It's influenced from somewhere. So tell me about the VW. You know, I don't know. Yeah. The thing was, my grandma, she had this VW Bug, and you know, New York, right? It was a yeah. rock box. I mean, thrash, yeah. a 72 Bug by, by 1984 when I got it, you know, 1983, whatever. It was a waste. So uh, my dad drove for a while. It sat there every winter. It always ran. So he's like, all right, by the time you're 16, if you can put this thing together, you know, you got a car. So, uh, yeah, I figured that thing out. Took the engine out, did a bunch of stuff, and had a car when I was 15. I saw somewhere where you, uh, of course, didn't have a lot of tools in it either, but you were riveting stuff together, galvanized, muddied it up, get it down the road. I got to tell you, I've done that same thing. That's nothing to be shamed about. When I was a kid, I did that same exact thing because I didn't have, yeah, I mean, the first thing from that point is to buy a torch set because, like you're saying, a, a MIG welder was unheard of. And you were you were brazing things together back in the day with Flux. Flux was interacting with the fillers. I mean, it was something you had to work through and get around unless you were letting everything over. Yeah. But yeah, I've done the rivet thing. Is is that true that that's what you did? You riveted that together and got it down the road and that was your car? Absolutely. And the uh, the sheet metal brake you see in my shop on every show, that's the same model. My dad worked for a roofing company making gutters, all copper yep. stuff. And uh, they had that sheet metal break in the shop. So I was like, I think I could make rocker panels out of that thing. And sure mm -hmm. enough, they had they had galvanized tin that they would make flashing out of for the roofs. 
so we made these rocker panels you know i measured everything so the running boards would fit back on and pop riveted and did whatever the heck it took and this i basically glued it together with bondo after that <laughs> and it lasted, whatever. lasted about one winter it's all it takes get it down the road right especially when you're hearing it's something oh, like yeah. that the, the seat fell through the floor on that car and that was the end of that i stepped on the brake <laughs> i stepped on the brakes and while i was driving the floor pan went down and i went with it it's pretty cool. Really? <laughs> I don't have that those kind of stories, but okay, doesn't sound too safe. <laughs> LPW are a diamond, a dime a dozen back then, you know. So I just got another yeah. car, and I had I don't know how many of those cars, but they were all rotten in New York. So yeah. So what what was next after that? And I saw somewhere where you read uh, one of the hot rod books, not the magazine, but you read something on customization. And I'm guessing you're probably. Yeah between 16, 17 years old, somewhere in that time frame. Is is that where you got your influence and looked at it and said, you know what, I could do that same thing, but better? Or what What were you thinking at that point? A hundred percent. This is actually, a, a, I think, in middle school, school library. It was some older book, and I did look it up in past years, but it was actually a series of them where it was more like a, you know, like the teenage story of the guy coming up, he gets the girl, and in the end they crash the car and she dies, you know, that type of thing. But it went in pretty good detail about how he, uh, you know, he figured out this engine and da, da da right down to the upholstery. And as I remember, those colors were brown, pink, and cream. And you see what color the space junkie is. The same colors I read in that book in middle school, he did his interior in those three tones. So, so what after the VW, what was car number two? Where did you go from there? Because you just don't pack up and go to California. What's that space like between oh, that no, VW I, uh, and moving? So we're, we're talking about my first car in 83, and I graduated high school in 89, and I moved to California in 98. So that's a good 20-year stretch. So, uh, yeah, lots of Volkswagens just because they were weird growing up in New York. Nobody customized them. I didn't build a hot rod until I moved to California. Really? really? Yeah. What was the first? I had a, uh, I, I built a, a 31 Model A Roadster for a fella here in LA in about 99, first year I moved here, and I was hooked. He had a flathead with a C4 automatic behind that, very traditional looking car. I was like, this is even cooler than a Volkswagen. And I, I never turned back. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you on that one. So back up a second I never because had a you, from what I I heard, you were into construction. Watch the iron workers, the guys weld, and gravitated towards the metal. Is that right? Yep. Oh so yeah, what was you guys that? being East Coaster, you might you might remember from Manhattan, New York City, Apex Tactical School. It was almost like yeah. Crazy Eddie's, right? The commercial. Yeah, I went to yeah. Apex and I certified. In their, in their Manhattan location. I think it was 14th Street or something. As a welder? To be able to do iron got work? Certified, certified as a welder. Never did iron work, but I got certified. I could have got any job done in bridges or whatever, but I, uh, I wanted to do cars. Yeah, yeah. But prior to, the, prior to that, you were doing actual construction. Was it high-rise construction or was it commercial or yeah. residential? <laughs> The company that my father worked for is uh, based in Rockefeller Center. So that was the thing. I worked primarily in those buildings there. And they were a waterproofing construction outfit. And we were literally right below the skating rink in Rockefeller Center. And we did wow. all, all the roofs on those buildings. That's how I really started to figure out copper, lead, soldering, forming. We did a lot of, you know, mainly waterproofing, but some other restoration stuff too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's huh. awesome. Yeah, because you'll you'll learn a lot because the weather because of the weather is so extreme. You learn a lot about waterproofing in New York. That's for sure. Yeah, I get that. And I worked perfect. on the top. I worked on the top of the rock that GE building where the big GE is over the winter on top of that building. I climbed up that antenna. It was crazy. Yeah, my dad my dad uh, was an iron worker. He helped. He did a bunch of stuff in, in Manhattan. Yeah. Cool. So I, I remember going to see him. And, you know, we went. To, we'd go down to the city and we'd see him at his job for lunch or something. 
Yeah, I remember, I remember those. That, that's a hard life, man. You, you, you were better off going to do cars. <laughs> well, that's sure. the thing. My dad, he had the same company his entire career. He was like, I'm 50. He just retired. Like, he was with that outfit for 40 something years. Pretty wild. Man. You don't see that much nowadays. No, you don't see that at all now, man. Yeah. yeah. It's just proves to you the, uh, you know, the duration, you know, a fixture like Rockefeller Center or whatever, you know, it's pretty much there forever. And he was employed mm -hmm. the whole time. And so you, you move to California, open up a shop, right? And then I heard that uh, you were you were one of the contestants on Monster Garage back in the day, the original series. <clears throat> Tell us what was going on there. What, what were you thinking? Well, it was the hottest show ever, right? Everybody's watching that. Like, what the heck is this? And I was like, that, yeah. that's what I do. I build crazy stuff. So uh, the production office happened to be like a couple miles down the road from Sun Valley where I was renting the shop. So sent over the resume, the whole deal. They're like, well, how about Monster House? Because that's not as popular. We could use a guy like you next week. <laughs> so I got to be on Monster House first. And I built like a stainless steel bar and some other stuff. And then they're like, whoa, all right, come on down. <laughs> yeah. They, they wanted to see if you could do what you said you did. That's what they wanted to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Did you make it? Was an did you make it to Monster Garage? Yeah. Did you so make it on? That was, about, that was about the time that that was wrapping up. The last episode was a two hour thing called How to Monsterize Everything. So it was Monster House meets Monster Garage in the garage in Long Beach. And they did a bunch of weird stuff. I made a, I made a wheelie golf cart, I made a drive-in movie theater out of a Cadillac, and a few other cool things. What was it like working with Jesse James? That was that was after him. That was the last thing. Whatever was happening, that 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 golf was closing up, and he wasn't even on that. Oh, okay. oh wow! I didn't yeah, realize that, that was the very last thing. Yeah. Huh. huh. So you, you talked about uh we touched on it a little bit about uh Big Daddy and his influence over you. And you can see some of that, of course, a lot of it in uh, Space Junkie with the bubble and the whole layout. What what did, did uh what was your first impression and, and why'd you why do you feel you gravitated towards his style and him? Oh well that was the only he, like he was totally unique right of course you know starbird and so many others did the bubble tops but he had like that freaky cartoon thing you know with the, with the monsters and the weirdos and all that and i'm yeah. like that's how i feel i feel just like that yeah yeah i love I, what i like about them I, what i've always liked about those cars like with the, with the johnny the johnny jalopy the, the cab is always like it's tilted you know what i mean and it Real extreme. That's how they used to build customs in the you know, in the seventies. Remember they they have all those crazy like phone booth uh, phone booth boards and the, the booth is at a forty five degree angle. It's, they just look like they're, they're they're like cartoon cars. They're all yeah. yeah. Look, I'm, I'm still hearing That's crazy not... noises. I'm hearing crazy noises from you. You know what I think. Yeah, we should probably run to commercial and come back, go out and come back in. I don't, I don't hear it now. Do you? Ian, do you hear that noise in your end or no? I hear it on my end when you're speaking. Yeah. Maybe I got to go out too and come back in. Ken, you want to run to commercial for thirty seconds? And we'll come back out. We'll go back out. Ever wonder what happened to your favorite Hollywood stars? Some are screen legends. That's a Carla. Some made history. What do you say? Is it the new blues mobile or what? One thing's for sure, they all have more to tell. Road trip with me, Lou Santiago, as I hunt down these iconic cars. The cars actually stolen. My kids said, Dad, you're not going to believe what's over here. And take you behind the scenes to get the story behind the story. I'm going to have the car do the same thing. Oh, bang. Wow. From the designers who built them, the stars that drove them, and the lucky motherfuckers who stumbled across them. Where was his car when he found it? Pull in there, pull in there. Dude, tell me you have your hand on it. You're not gonna believe some of this stuff. There we go. Is it better? It, it is better. 
Ian, how's it? Is he frozen? He's frozen. I don't know if he's frozen or if he's acting. He's muted too. Ken's got him muted. He's got to come back. What I what I wanted to say about that trailer is next week, uh, Tom Sormento, the builder and the mechanic from uh, Dukes of Hazard. I did reach out to uh, John Schneider's people to see if we get John Schneider on at the same time. So that would be cool if he could explain some of those Dukes of Hazard builds back in the day to balance it out. I still get a noise when I speak. I don't know what's going on, but uh, never had that happen before. But yeah, and I think that uh, as far as iconic, the Dukes of Hazard falls in there too. But Ian, what I wanted to get at is you, you mentioned it earlier. We had Gene Winfield on and Gene brought you up. I mean, he was all smiles when you, your name came up and he starts talking. Yeah. You were here. He was talking about the plexiglass thing, the bubble, and uh, I think some of the fiber. He, he lit up, which was pretty cool to see. And, and obviously, old school, Gene was uh, influenced. Uh, George Barris, I assume, is probably an influence, too, because it's the same time frame, same old school, and you got an old soul. So I'm guessing that that was something that that clicked with you. I, I, explain your relationship and what you're thinking of Winfield. Well, that was just one of the things I mentioned earlier, like these older dudes, like when they saw the cars that I was building, they're like, man, you know, I feel like it's a time warp or something. Like, this is exactly what would have happened back in, in the day. So I don't know. I just... Barris loved the cars. He showcased me at one of his car shows down in Culver City. Gene loved the cars and just one of those things where it's just like it was kind of like open doors. Like, man, you just welcome to the club. The West Coast Customs, yeah. they put on the, the Cruising Nationals in Santa Maria. They uh, you know, the Hall of Fame they have, same thing. I'm the youngest guy in their whole crew. And it's just like, man, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, people don't build cars like that anymore, man. I mean, no when you, uh, who else is building them besides you? There's a lot of dudes yeah. like on Facebook and whatnot. There's a lot going on. Is a it? lot more, way more talented dudes than me, you know, like with the metal forming and all the stuff going on. Like there's some serious talent in the circle that I keep on Facebook. So, yeah, I just, you know, I got some wild ideas and I'm lucky to have a TV show to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Someone put the noise is annoying. <laughs> yeah, we know. That's why we went out and came back in. <laughs> <Yeah>. That's cool. <clears throat> so what do you have? What do you have that you're getting ready to do that you can talk about or you want to talk about? Anything cool? Oh, yeah. I'll talk about whatever you want. I mean, if you look on my Instagram or Facebook, that's actually what's going on every day. You know, I post oh, okay. what we're working on. Yeah. So that's that's real stuff for the new season that's coming out in the fall. Seven new episodes. So that's what I've been up to. Yeah. So season six or seven? I don't even know. I think it's seven or eight. It's on Motor Trend now. We've been on Mav. So Motor Trend was doing all these reruns. And now we're right. doing fresh content for Motor Trend coming out in this fall. Got you. Got you. Yeah. The, Pretty the, interesting this with uh, the arrangement to be able to jump from one network to another and then have all brand new content after they've been showing all your past work really gives people a, a really good history of where we've been with our, with our work. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm, I'm typing up. I gotta make. I gotta do a comment here because I think it's, I don't know if it's me or not. Am I the noisy one? <clears throat> yeah, I is it, can't have my mic muted, so I don't know if I'm. I don't know how I'm making noise. I don't know. So it's pretty crazy. But anyway, so what's one? I mean, I know. I know you're. What 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 cool crazy thing like a Johnny Jalopy are you gonna do in this next season? Do you have anything like that coming up? I wouldn't say any cartoon cars, but we made sort of a mini monster truck out of a Ford Pinto, so that's pretty cartoony. Johnny Jalopy <laughs> actually did a cartoon after the fact of that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a it's a '77 Ford Pinto on 40 inch bogger tires. You know, it's pretty, pretty right, cool. Looking. Right. Nothing that yeah. hasn't been done before, but I put my own twist on it. Right. 
Right. I mean, that's what you do. You do your own twist. I mean, yeah. So what's the deal with the dog, man? The, the, I, was, I know I a was, bunch of episodes. The dog, uh, one of the dogs is always on the welding table. I think that's so great. It's so awesome. Just like hanging out and watching your work. That's the thing. We were, uh, you know, we started our first season. We didn't know what was up, right? It was just like a shot in the dark kind of thing. And we rented this little shop in Ventura. And these biker guys next door had a litter of pit bulls, fresh, freshly birthed. And this dude came over like as soon as he could work, as soon as he could walk or work, whatever. But like he walked in the door. I mean, tiny. You look at the first picture of him, the first episode. And he's just, I'm not leaving. Like this was his spot. And I didn't know what to call him, but dude. So that's who he is, dude. The dude. That's yeah. awesome. And he's nine years old now, so he's been around a while with like our show. Yeah, he has. Yeah. That's awesome. And and they just stay in the shop with you when you're working? Well, I was living in my shop for 10 years, for 20 years, 10, you know, 10, 10 for the show. So, yeah, he lived with me. I was doing serious bachelor stuff, just living in my workshop. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that's that's living that's living it, man. That that's that's living the whole entire hot rod building. Yeah, I, yeah. That's that's what that is. You're living yeah. it out. We moved around a lot too, especially with the TV show. If you see all the different episodes cuz we didn't know if it was going to fly. I literally packed everything up, put most of my stuff in a big shipping container. We rented this little shop, tried the show. You know, it was affordable. Worked on the next season. We moved. You know, we tried out a few different locations. And you turned up in the desert. And you shot the floor, by the way. Yeah, tell us how TV yeah. came about. You went from... My producer was a cameraman on those TV show on, on the Monster Garage. Yeah. I met him there. He was just huh. a, he was a camera guy. He's like, hey, I know this guy. We did our first DVD in 2003, the Back from the Dead, Hot Rods, Rat Rods, and Custom Culture. So he he met this dude who's a video producer. He's like, I want to build a you know build a hot rod, make a DVD about it. So that's what we did. And that was the first one. And they took off from there. Yeah, to use that as I understand, they used that as their sort of business card in their in their pitch to Mav. And they're like, oh yeah, we like that. Just keep doing it. Yeah, I, I like the simplicity of your show. I think that, like I was saying, when you stand back, you actually explain your brain. When you're looking at it, I think people that have built projects similar or tried to think the same thing. They go, you know, maybe a little bit of this, a little tweaking here or doing here. But the way that you explain things is on point. A lot, not a, that's a talent. Not a lot of people can do that. It's uh, interesting because... Uh... People will think, you know, with other TV shows, you might see this huge crew and like a lot of, you know, production assistants and all this business. But uh, it's two guys. It's me and Brooks. So it's like a, a couple dudes hanging out in the shop. And that's that's the that's the vibe, I guess, that works for people. It's micro production. Super, super simple. I would be able to do it otherwise. <clears throat> yeah. No, you better. You're better off doing it the way you're doing it. You're way better off doing it the way you do. But this way, this way, you, you know what I've learned about being a TV is a lot of camera guys don't know cars, so I'm sure your relationship is a little bit different because you're saying to him, "What? Let's look at this. You know, what do you think about shooting this? Because it's something worth shooting." Where in a lot of your other productions, they'll, they'll just sit there and say, "Yeah, we'll shoot it," but it's never going to turn up on TV because they don't understand why you would want to show that. You know. And also knowing Brooks for almost 20 years, it's like an old relationship, right? I know what yeah. he wants to do. I know that I have to walk in that shop door sometimes 10 times and say the same thing just to get in. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I give him what he needs, and uh, he, he knows how to edit it into a you know an entertaining show for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because, dude, you, you have a cast of characters that come through there. You know, and then the it's shows important. that I've seen you. You got some guys that come through there who come up with some just really cool stuff to help you out with, you know? I mean, I've seen a yes. few episodes where, like, you know, guys, oh, yeah, I got this transmission, and you're looking. And, you, you know, it may be scripted, but still, to find some of the stuff that your guys are bringing in, 
that that's still impressive as hell, man. It really is. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly right. These eccentric dudes that I do get stuff from. It's a yeah. true story. It's it's just so interesting because like that's how I kind of got seen, right? I was bringing these weird cars to Bob's Big Boy in Burbank, and people are like, "What? What is that?" You know, it's like some weird stuff. And uh, you just you can tend to meet the eccentrics when you uh, do that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they're the ones, they're the ones. It trips their trigger. They they're interested in it, and they're looking for someone to do that kind of stuff because they don't know anyone who's thinking like they are. Yeah, I get what you're saying. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Bur yeah, I built some weird stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> that's cool. That's right. Yeah, we're, I'm I'm keeping Ken busy with muting and unmuting my mic. <laughs> and Bruce wanted to know what your favorite build was. Oh, hands down, it's the Johnny Five, the crazy cartoon hot rod, the BW yeah. Buck thing. That thing was uh, I don't know something about it. Like you know, you struggle with a lot of projects, right? You know, technicalities, stuff like that, but. That project was like destined to happen. I've never had anything that complicated come together so quick and smooth. It's awesome. That thing is so cool. That's it so cool. cool. It is. Didn't didn't you do something? That, oh God, was it was red and white? Did you do something that was along those lines? I could have. It might have been a drawing. I saw. I saw it. It might have been a drawing that someone did that was similar to the giant to the Johnny Jalopy one, but it was red and white. Was that was that you? Did you have a hand in that? No, no. Both of the projects I did with Johnny were blue. We did the uh, Funky Futura from Ventura, that Doom Buggy thing. That was the same color scheme as the Johnny Five. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, I it was a while ago when I when I saw it, so I don't I can't even tell you how old it was. I just saw a picture. But it was, yeah, it's yeah, interesting that... with the reruns also because they're showing stuff that's quite, you know, quite old in, in TV you know terms, and it's being aired you know, every week. So stuff gets kind of mixed up too. I don't even remember everything we built. <laughs> and I gotta I gotta ask the lightning bolt tattoos. They got a meaning. It's my superhero costume. Like at night when I put on my cape and go crime fighting. Get my special that's the boots on. That's the bachelor days. <laughs> it was a good idea when I was 22. Ian's right? talking shit now. <laughs> that is pretty funny. No, I get comments at the supermarket, everything from like, oh, San Diego's Charger fan. to like, are you a racist? To like, what is this? Like, it was a weird idea. But yeah, kind of I got a I got a lightning right? bolt on my shoulder. I don't know if you can see, see it. There you go. We don't want to see it. We don't want to see it. Look at, look at those guys. We don't want to see it. It's action. <laughs> it's like action. Right. <laughs> I got mine to I got mine to remember how fast things change because in a in a blip you can go from one extreme to the other. And that was just to remind me to, to cherish every moment of it. And I was just wondering if you had a similar story with your tattoos. Like they don't go very deep. No. no. I actually got a bunch of tattoos removed just because I was super into it. You know, it was like a real thing in the 90s, right? When tattooing first, like, really blew up. And I was doing that for a while also. It was just one of them things. Like, oh, I like this design. Let's do this. So that's kind of where it stands. Ian, you, you had a, uh, a pickup truck, I believe, was your daily, right? And you just got rid of it yes, not sir. long ago. What do you drive now? Oh, these are uh, these are all Victor's ex fleet trucks for his landscaping company. That's we've been trading for years. I haven't had to buy a vehicle in forever. <laughs> I just drive used pickup trucks. <laughs> that works. Why it's not? incognito, right? I got nothing, no no signage on the side. It's just some of them have a number, and they're basically lawnmower haulers. And when they needed to update their fleet, I got them. I That's got not three. Bad. I just sold one. Have you done anything uh, lately with Victor and any any crazy, crazy ideas, or is there something we should be looking for? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you're on Instagram, you'll see this, uh, I don't know what to call it, other than a drag boat. You got you, you familiar with that thing at all? I, I got to tell you, I, I looked for you on Instagram about two months, three months ago and couldn't find you. There was something that you posted said I'm on there, but there was no post. So you must have updated or started doing it recently, no? 
no, three no, months, so five. It's full, it's full underscore custom underscore Ian. Uh, all right, uh, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, but aside from that, no, we took a uh, we took a vintage speedboat and put it on a like an old school dragster chassis. Yeah, so I'm looking for it now. Wheel. Yeah. For, I, I could I could not find him on there. I kept looking, yeah. I could not find you. Who knows? That'll be an episode too. I'll yeah. we'll have to check that out. That and, is pretty uh, course, crazy. That's, that's Victor. He saw that and he's like, "Oh yes, bring it over. I'll take it." He has a lot. Of, <laughs> a lot of Ian, I saw I, I saw your client base is around the world. You ship cars, Japan, Netherlands, Germany. But what are people asking for, and how's the taste overseas compared to here? What, what's unique? Well, the interesting thing about the overseas is they want like that Americana thing, right? So the, the real freaky stuff, I mean, I built this weird Plymouth Savoy that went to Germany. But again, it wasn't like commissioned by those clients uh, out of the country. They just kind of bought them after the fact. But nothing, none of the super crazy stuff. More traditional kind of things. The Roadster from the very first DVDs in Japan. Huh. Okay. He's have on you had anybody? Too. Have you had anybody reach out to you from overseas and say, uh, you know, commission work? I want you to build this style. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the TV show, especially lately, I've had a lot of interest. And my response to them is like, well, we're we're committed to doing this show right now, and. Everybody in TV will tell you, you know, the time frame and the budget are paramount, right? So it's like we have yeah. pretty heavy restrictions regarding that if we want to keep this show going. So I'm really committed to that at this point. We're picking stuff that fits with our time frame and budget. Yeah, that makes sense. Here's your, here's you on your mini bike. That's on I the table see. right now, right there. Look at the I second picture. We're building a we're building a chopper out of it, like a I sugar. Bike. Yeah, I just put that one here. Yeah. yeah, that's made crazy. It's gonna be yeah, fun. Got that's it. got the, uh, the the bigger engine from Harbor Freight, the six horsepower Predator engine. The that's a damn hot rod. Yeah, that's pretty silly. Hmm. This is the. Um, I think this is the boat frame, the chassis for the boat. No, that's the uh, that's going to be our last episode. That's my twenty-eight Ford. That's over here in the shop. Here, I was working on that today, also. So that's going to okay. be kind of a kind of old school, not a not really a traditional hot rod, but sort of like an old work truck. I call it the gentleman. It'll be like a I don't know what you want to say, like a like a dust bowl era kind of work truck. Got you. Yeah. Hey, what what took you to the desert? How far are you away from Winfield? Oh, I'm right down the street from Winfields. He's my, you know, pretty close neighbor. You know, in comparison out here, he's five minutes away. But yeah. uh, I'm 90 miles north of Los Angeles. Well, oh, okay. You said you got tired of all the hustle bustle and the people and you moved out, out that way. Is that what the reason? So you're, you're, yeah, you got your own thing going on? Yeah, yeah. I had the opportunity to go in on this uh, old horse ranch built in 1940. Super, it was homesteaded out here, so it's a 50 acre old horse ranch out here. That's awesome. pretty cool. Had a workshop, the well's on, the well's got water, flour, everything a guy needs. So, Man. I was in that nice, and I just got it was just so congested there in the city and the location, and it was just enough. I had enough, I need the quiet, yeah, yeah. So, what's the deal with the pinter scent, the pinter scepter? Well, we had a couple of rainy winters out here, and I could not get to the pavement. We're about five miles from the pavement, and it's so muddy out here. I was stranded here once for four days, and like, I'm going to build something that I can get to the mailbox with. <laughs> <laughs> that was seriously what that was about. If I got to go to the if I got to go to the market, I'm going to get there one way or another. Dude, it's a pinto. That's what makes it so cool. Well, it's I haven't seen a Pinto in forever. It's a, I'm sorry, a pin detector. I'm sorry. It's a pin well, My wife, Jamie, came up with that idea. Because I'm like, yeah, it's like Mad Max. It's like the Interceptor of Mad Max, but for the wasteland. She's like, it's the Pinterceptor. Exactly. It's awesome. It's awesome. I, li I like on I like the on the picture underneath. This is all hail the Pinterceptor. 
<laughs> the regulator of the baseline. That's awesome. Very cool. Yep, we got, I mean, it's, yeah. I've got my questions answered. That's for damn sure. I think so too. I think. I mean, that, I don't know. Uh, I don't know about John, but I mean, you've answered my questions. Ian. I'm being selfish here. That's all there's to it. Oh God, God here we go. You got to break my balls again. Right? <laughs> when I had hair, I'm about to get your, your haircut like you guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I actually uh, there's software now that uh, will tell you what you look like with no hair, and I plugged it in yesterday. And you look, and you look like us. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Can you see that? Oh, no. get, your, get, your, get, your, get your shit together, John. Uh, uh. <laughs> no, I look like Breaking Bad a little bit, don't I? No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> breaking not so bad. Breaking not, not so bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> Nacho cheese. Exactly. Oh, right. Whatever. So, Ian, um, tell everybody where they can find you. I mean, I know I, I found you on, on Instagram. Where can everyone find you to see more pictures of your work? Let's get that over with before we, before we run away so we know. Well, the new shows are on Motor Trend this fall, so all new stuff. And then, uh, you know, Instagram is full underscore custom underscore Ian. Instagram and then Facebook is me, Ian Roussel. So that's okay. the most current stuff. Yeah. Got you. So very cool. Uh, John, do you have anything else? Uh, merch. People want to buy merch. You got it available? Yeah, you're sure. Yeah, we, we do. Uh, we do stuff at shows, but uh, you know, I don't. I'm not a retail guy. You know, we might have a website someday. So it's kind of where it's at. We got stuff, and maybe we'll give it away. Maybe we'll sell some of it. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Dan, are you uh, you heading to SEMA this year? Kind of up in the air. I'm not sure. Here. You know, with last year being canceled, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I had a car in there two years ago, which was awesome. I had the Space Junkie 2. We were showing it. And then uh, if I can get a car in there, possibly. But, you know, I'll update it. Like I was saying, social media. I'll just uh, post up if it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. If you if you do get something in, we're thinking of having a, uh, on 1027, a prep you know, a teaser for SEMA to tell people where you're at, what to look for, how to find you, your appearances, whatever you're doing there. So if you got something, let us know. Okay, and, for uh, sure. You come on for 10, 15 minutes, talk about, you know, what's happening to push people to find you. Because I know a lot of our guys that watch this actually go to SEMA or want to go. So maybe to get them to join and do their thing and be part of it. But yeah, I appreciate you coming on. I, um, I really apologize for the technical noises, which sounds like a chipmunk or something somewhere. That's a first. Mm. Usually it's uh, silky smooth, but go figure. You know, I don't know if it's uh, one, one of the technology. lines or what. Mm. Yeah, it's true. But uh, I appreciate it. Well, I guess that's the end of Ian. I guess that's it. Can kick him off. Yeah. Sorry, Ian. <laughs> all right everybody i hope you enjoyed this show sorry for the technical difficulties we had no idea that that was going to happen like john said it was the first time next week we have tom, tom sarmento he is the guy who built all of the dukes of hazard chargers and police cars so there's a lot of cars that he built to all do the same stuff and do a lot of flying through the air because that was big on that show all right, just so you just so you guys know. And remember, if you want to send an email, it's the number three lefts don't at gmail.com. All right. So that's all for tonight. Tell your friends. We're gonna keep trying to have good quality guests. Ian, it was great to talk to you. Really appreciate your work. It's pretty awesome. And and uh what is it at? There was a guy, Dan Popovich. He said so no conversion van. So I mean Ian, if you feel like doing a conversion van that's wacky, you know, I bet you Dan would be really cool with it, you know, because he's obviously that kind of guy who wants a conversion van. So there you have it. John, Yo. say goodbye. Good night. Goodbye. Later. Later.